Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Carly and this is a mostly knitting channel. Sometimes we do talk about other things like sewing or natural dyeing. Today we have a traditional knitting podcast and I have quite a few things to talk about so let's get started. Before I forget, let's start with what I'm wearing and this is a somewhat newer finished item that I featured a couple episodes ago and this is the Lily Top by Yumiko Alexander and I did a modified version of it where I used DK weight instead of worsted and did a tank instead of a short sleeve. So I knit this using Juniper Moon Zoe in the color Sage. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to wear it kind of as a vest in the cooler months and I'm excited to say that I can. I think it looks pretty cute like this and I hope to wear it like this throughout most of the year and I can do it with long sleeves as well but I think it turned out really cute just over a, um, a simple white shirt like this and I would love to wear it over top of like long sleeve dresses and things like that over the winter. So I still have to make some just because I don't think the ones I have now are going to fit with this armhole. I'll just need a dress that kind of has a tighter armhole area up here so it's not too uncomfortable. So that's what I'm wearing and everything else featured today in this video will be linked down below to my Ravelry project page. And we're going to start with some of the finished objects. So the first one's kind of a big one. It was featured in last, in the last podcast episode, and that is the Northland sweater by Petite Knit. So I was knitting this for my boyfriend, and I started this September 25th and finished October 10th, which was two weeks exactly, which really shocked me because... My goal was to finish this on November 1st, giving me just over a month's time to finish this. And I thought that was an, an eager goal, or what's the word, an ambitious goal, <laughs> because I just thought a sweater of this size, I was doing size medium, but like a medium male size, just not something I'm used to <laughs> knitting that much. So I just thought that even, November 1st was pushing it but for whatever reason I just had a really good time knitting this and it really did fly off my needles. I could not stop knitting and <laughs> I'm really really glad that it's done. We chose Finley Dye Works. They're superwash merino, 100% superwash merino in the color Mia and this is a worsted weight. And here is the sweater. I kind of have to angle it a certain way in the light so that you can see the different colors because it's quite a dark yarn. But this is top down and so it starts with doing the shoulder seam here or it's not it's all seamless but you start by doing increases here here we go increases on either side there so you can see it and then that turns into the raglan increases for the sleeve and I'm just gonna back up So I haven't had a chance yet to take pictures of this on Andrew to show here up on the screen, but I have taken pictures of it just like laying down flat on the bed. So I'll put it up on the screen here just to show, show you more of those details because it is really hard <laughs> to show this on camera because it is such a dark yarn. But basically this is top down. You start just by casting on for the neck, but you do pick up the ribbing for the neck afterwards. So then you just have to do all of these increases for the shoulder and then eventually you get into the, the raglan increases. I really like this design and the way it fits him. I think it looks perfect on him. Again, we did size medium and that was basically to the recommended amount of ease for his chest circumference. And I have mentioned this before, but I have knit him a vest in the past, but this was a couple yeah, over two years ago, and I didn't do a gauge swatch, I didn't measure him, I just kind of thought he'd be a medium, and then I went for it, and it was just way, way too small of a vest for him, 
So I definitely learned my lesson for that because I spent hours and hours knitting him this vest and he can't really wear it because it's just not a right fit at all. So for this, he was a part of the process, did his measurements. He tried it on multiple times throughout me knitting this and it just gave me such more peace of mind too, knowing that I was on track and that the fit was right and it, it was looking good on him. So that was really nice for him to be a part of it also and just see the sweater grow and see it through all of its um, different stages of knitting it. And I did do a tubular bind off for all of the edges. So I think that turned out really nicely. It's nice and stretchy too. And I did use the recommended needles for all of the parts of the sweater so you do oh except for the neck the neck I did 3.75 I believe and I think it calls for 3.5 the body I did five millimeter and then the other like the bottom of the hem for the sleeves in the body I, I believe that was 4.5 millimeters so I did mostly the recommended sizes of needles for this and it turned out really well I did do a gauge swatch before this and I got gauge pretty much spot on with the recommended size of needles so that was great and what else? Oh yes, this is what I wanted to talk about. So this is 100% superwash merino yarn. And I have knit with 100% superwash before, but it's only been, I think, just a hat that I made. So I haven't made like a large scale project where there's a lot more weight to the fabric and just a lot more like wear and tear that would happen being a sweater rather than a hat. So when I initially blocked this, I knew that it was going to grow because it is superwash yarn, so that's to be expected but it really grew. I was so worried because as soon as I laid it flat to dry, I was like, oh my God, this is like size, it seems like it's size like extra large now. And I was so worried that it wasn't going to kind of bounce back into its original shape. Luckily it, through drying, it did kind of come back and overall it only grew a little bit from its original state, which is great because that's what I wanted. I wanted some areas to relax a little bit and the sleeves to grow and just the body to lengthen just a slight bit but I am just concerned about overall like through I don't know maybe even just weeks or months or through the years how much this sweater could grow because it's super wash so if any of you have experienced knitting with super wash and have had it really grow or maybe it hasn't too much I'd love to know your thoughts on it and maybe how you fix that I have done a little bit of research and I'm always just so hesitant of putting knits in the dryer and I've only ever done that with my socks and I'm fine with socks going in the dryer but anything else I just would never do so I'm always scared of that like this hasn't grown yet but I am just expecting it to grow and I kind of want to be prepared for that and know what to do if I need to shrink it back up a little bit. So if you have any tips, I would love to know and I'd be really appreciative if you threw any of those tips down in the comments. Another cool thing about this project was that this was my first adult pattern for Petite Knit. So I have done a little baby cardigan from her before, the anchor's jacket. And I have done, I guess, they were adult patterns. It was the Sophie scarf and the Sophie shawl, but not a full-on like garment in an adult size from her. So that was exciting for me because, as we all know, Petite Knit is everywhere. Everyone's always knitting her and, or I mean, knitting her patterns. So I was just excited to finally knit a Petite Knit pattern and see how that went. And I really did enjoy it. I love this sweater. I... Just, I'm never called to knitting her patterns for myself. I do have other designers that I'm more drawn to before going to Petite Knits, even though like I love all of her things and they are all beautiful. And I'm sure I'll knit something for myself in one of her patterns one day, but I can't believe how long it took me to actually knit a Petite Knit pattern, like an adult Petite Knit pattern. So that's exciting to kind of have that one done and I can cross that off the list that I knit a petite knit pattern. So there's not a whole lot to say about this other than it was great, so enjoyable, love this yarn. I think it's beautiful, beautiful color. I love how it turned out and Andrew's very happy with it. He's already worn it a ton. So overall it was a huge success and I definitely would make this pattern again. And I probably will in the future because it fits Andrew so well that I could see 
making multiples of these in different colors and just it could be a nice like staple piece for him. My next finished object is one that's actually designed by myself. I haven't featured it on the podcast in quite some time now because I started this when was it July 3rd and then I like got some progress on it but then I kind of got tired of working on it because this is a gift and I knew that it was in July. I had so much time to finish this so I kind of just lost mo motivation for this project but I picked it back up the other day and it only took me a couple days to finish it and I'm very very pleased with it. So I'm calling this the Floriculture Cowl and here it is. <laughs> I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. I think it's really cute and and it's nice because it's sturdy yarn and it just like stays up nice. I think it'll be a really good like wind blocker in the winter time and it's not too bulky. Sometimes I just hate lots of things around my neck, so I think this will be nice to just have a like a one simple layer of protection there around the neck. And I knit this in some Queensland Collection Tenderfoot that was gifted to me from Knitting Fever. And this light, like almost, I guess it's like an off-white color is Old Ivory, which is color 104. And then the dark red purple is 108 in Bordeaux Red. So this is fingering weight yarn and it is... 20% nylon and then the rest is 100% wool so it's not super wash and I think that's just what gives it a bit more sturdiness than maybe your regular sock yarn would and that's what I really like about it because it just creates a little bit of a stiffer fabric which is what I'm looking for when making a cowl. So I have wrote up like I do have a chart written up for this and this is super simple. I have a pattern written up for it. It's really basic simple pattern but I'm thinking of releasing it for free if anybody is interested in it and not doing any testers or anything because it is a free pattern. But um, yeah let me know if that'd be of interest to you if you'd be into knitting something like this. It'd be a free pattern and I could probably get that out fairly soon. It is all written up. It's just not which is not the most fancy pattern, but it'll definitely do. And for a free pattern, I think it'd be okay. But I did start with a rolled hem here with the contrast color, which I really like. And then I went into some pearl ridges. And then after that, we've just got three chart repeats for the cowl here. And then I ended it the same way. So just went with some pearl ridges and then rolled a stockinette of the contrast color. So I do have more of this Tenderfoot yarn in my stash and I want to do another one where the um, flowers are white and then this the background is like a really light beige so it'd be a super low contrast version of this and I think that and super neutral too and could go with anything so I think that'd be really nice to have in my wardrobe. And what's great about this is that I only used about 205 yards uh, total, so it doesn't use much yarn. It's a quick knit, and why I started this is that in the summer I was really craving some color work, but I just didn't want to start a huge color work sweater. I just wanted something easy and simple and straight, and no shaping, no increasing, no decreasing, and that's why this came about. I'll show you the inside too so you can see the floats here. And you can kind of see right about here, I must have switched what the dominant color would be by accident. That's probably actually where I picked it back up from not doing it for a while. But um, other than that, I think it's pretty consistent and it always looks so cool seeing the floats. So this one did take me a while because like I said, I put it down and had a long break from it. So it was July 3rd to October 19th, but this could definitely be done within a week. It's really quick and fun and meditative and by one chart repeat I would say that I was able to just read my knitting and not have to reference the chart anymore because it's just the same thing throughout. So that was really nice not to have to look at my phone or print off anything and just kind of have, I didn't have it memorized or anything but it was just easy to kind of reference the, the motif down below and then know what to do on the, the next row. So that was really nice. And 
yeah, I really enjoyed this. I am looking forward to making my next one in the low contrast and keeping this one or that one for myself. This one will be gifted for a Christmas knit or a Christmas gift. So I'm happy to have another gift knit done off the needles and ready for Christmas. Okay, we have two more finished objects and these ones I don't believe have been shown on the podcast at all. So I'm really excited to talk to you all about these actually. They are both socks and they're both using my own naturally hand dyed yarn. So I've been playing with different colorways recently and I just kind of wanted to knit up some samples to see how the colorways looked and to see if I liked them. So I just really was craving socks also. So I just cast on some vanilla socks for the first sample here. And this one is also, or all these socks that I'm showing are 100% BFL fingering wool. So I've been really curious about doing like nylon free and superwash free socks. And I'm excited to see how this BFL wool will wear and work over time. I haven't worn them yet because I've been keeping them nice to be able to show here on the podcast. So I'll just keep you updated on how the wear and tear of this yarn works out over time. But here we go. Here is some speckled socks. I've got two. <laughs> I just did a really simple cuff down vanilla sock. And I did a short row heel. That's my favorite and my go-to. And then a regular wedge toe. So I'll get in a little bit closer so you can see the colors here. But I used marigold and hollyhocks. And I just love all the different colors. So only two ingredients, but just the way it turned out, some of them, and it's kind of hard to show on camera, but there are so many different types of colors in there. So yeah, I've got myself two pairs of fun speckled socks here. They are so soft too. And I was a little bit worried while knitting them up because the fabric looked a little bit uneven and overall I would say my tension is very even and my stitches always look very even, especially when sock knitting. So I was wondering if that would block out or at all and I would say like post blocking the stitches really evened out and they look, it's blowing out a bit, but the stitches look fairly even I would say. So I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, I'm just really pleased to see some, some speckles. I love speckled socks. I think they're so fun. This one came out a little bit more speckled than this one. But overall, not too bad. Sometimes that is just the nature of hand dyeing. But I am very pleased with it. I can't wait to wear these. I am just building up my hand knit sock collection and it makes me really happy to look at them. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just like, I don't even wanna wear them because they just look so cute, like a pile of socks and especially like fresh after blocking. I just love looking at my socks. And I'm currently like quite obsessed with sock knitting at the moment and I can't seem to stop sock knitting. So that's been really fun. And my next pair of socks here are another sample pair of my own colorways here, my own hand dyed. And this one is actually a pattern from Summer Lee Knits. So this is from the Colorwork Cuff Club and this is the August chart. So this one has been super popular. I was very inspired when I saw this chart. I didn't immediately buy it, but then I saw these two colorways that I had dyed and I thought this will make a perfect um, August Colorwork Cuff Club. So here they are. They are so, so cute. I do have two of them. So the flowers are actually knit with the leftovers from the previous sock I just showed. So you can see little bits of speckles in there and I just think the speckles on the flowers look so cute and adorable. This flower over here looks, it appears as though it's lifting up, but I think it's just because these are freshly blocked. I think it's just the way it was like stretched out on the sock blocker that it was kind of like lifted up. So it was so, like I could not stop knitting. <laughs> I think I knit both of these in like four days because I was having such a good time. 
and it was so exciting to see how the color work would knit up with the little bits of speckles in there and I just couldn't wait to see how the whole motif would look so I just I just could not stop knitting these and I did modify these just by putting in my own short row heel that I prefer instead of I believe she does a heel flap and gusset for that and the only other modica modification that I did for these is that for color work, instead of increasing in needle size for working the actual color work part, which is what some really suggest, I just cast on for my regular size. And then after I'm done the ribbing, the first round of just plain stockinette, I'll increase my stitch count to the next size up and then I'll knit the color work in the larger size. And then after the color work's done, I'll do a couple more decreases to go back to my regular size and then just knit my regular size after that because I just find that a little bit easier. I don't have to switch needles or anything like that and I only have one sock knitting needle. So yeah, that's what I do and that's what I did with my rad radish socks because that's what Stone Knit suggests in the pattern and it worked really well for me and I can fit it easily over my heel. So I just thought I would continue with that and then that way I didn't have to buy new needles <laughs> and it worked out really well and I think that's just what, what I'm going to continue doing for any color work knitting for socks. So I'm just um, unbelievably happy with these and it's so fun to have my little like sock collection here of natural sock yarn and natural dyes and I'm so happy with them. They make me so happy. I just want to keep knitting all of these natural socks and natural dye socks and do a lot of color work socks. I'm just feeling really inspired lately for for all of the sock knitting. So that said, we'll transition into the whip portion of this and of course socks <laughs> we've got a sock whip and this is more of the bfl yarn i just showed you and it's all of my naturally hand dyed that i'm experimenting with with different colorways and sample knitting so this is actually again summer lee's color work cuff club this is the august bonus chart so sometimes she'll come out with two charts each month instead of just one and I guess I should back up if you're unfamiliar Summer Lee came out with a color work cuff club so it's only I think it was only about $14 or so for the entire year and then on the first of each month she releases a color work chart that you can put into your socks just for the cuff part and that um, bundle does come with a vanilla sock recipe also if you're new to sock knitting and don't have one nailed down yet. So I, um, yeah, I'm only knit the August one and then she had an August bonus chart and this is one I'm knitting now. And here it is. I am so happy about these. Again, it's kind of, there we go, that's a bit more color accurate. So I am using leftovers again from both of the socks I just showed you that like toffee colors in there and then also that speckled color is also in there for some of the diamonds you can see the speckling there and that toffee color and then on top of that I introduced this like clay pink and then this beautiful uh, olivey green for for the main sock main part of the sock so I believe this chart or this motif was inspired by like granny stripe crochet. So I just, I love them so much. I think these might be, well, when I finished these socks, I thought these are my favorite socks of all time that I've ever knit. But now that I have these on the go, I'm thinking these might be my new favorites. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I cannot stop knitting. So I did another short row heel. And I'm just past that and just working the foot. As you can see, I have quite a bit of <laughs> ends to weave in from the color work, but I'll deal with that later. I'm just really enjoying the stockinette part. And the combination of this needle size, which is 2.25 millimeters, with this BFL yarn and just being metal needles is just the best combination for me for whatever reason. So this yarn, it's a bit of a thicker weight rather than your regular 
like superwash nylon blend for socks. There you, you I think you usually get around like 430-ish yards. Now this one is more of I think it's closer to like 360 yards per 100 grams, so it's a bit thicker. And I'll just show you here. You can see it's a two ply. And yeah, just the combination of the, the bit of like thicker yarn and these needles and the needle size, the metal, it is so satisfying to me and it just like flies by. I just, it works really well for me for whatever reason and it just makes sock knitting so enjoyable. So this is the main color here. This is just a, a colorway that I wanted to sample knit and see how it looked. I'm really happy with it. Just a beautiful olive green. And then I'm using this in the color work. This is kind of that clay pink. Here's the leftovers from the other sock, which I'm also using in here. And here's some more leftovers. Here's that speckled colorway that I'm also using. So all of these colors together are so beautiful. Look at this. I can't wait to have these done and I also can't wait to cast on the second sock and then I'm very much looking forward to November 1st to see what Summer Lee releases for her November color work chart and I'll probably cast on another pair right away. I've been really enjoying color work knitting lately and doing it on a smaller scale on socks is just really satisfying and has been really fun for me. Playing with different colors is so satisfying and especially with playing with my own hand dyed yarn I think has just been really enjoyable for me and it just makes me like really proud of knitting on my own hand dyed yarn. I don't know. It's just really satisfying to see it knit up and turn out and look what I, I think it looks really beautiful and it's just kind of like seeing my like, visions come to life and I'm, it makes me really happy. So I should have these done. Hopefully at the very least one of these socks will be done and blocked and ready to show for the next episode. We could possibly have both socks done as well and maybe another one started on the rate or the yeah the rate that I'm going. I would not be surprised but I do have another project to talk about and that could take up more of my time. So the only other active whip that I want to talk to you about is the, I believe it's the Field Day Jacket by Ozetta. I believe that's what it's called. So I am knitting this in some beautiful yarn that was gifted to me from Knitting Fever. So this is Noro. It's the Noro Viola. And it's in color 27. And I have been wanting to knit this jacket for a really long time. As soon as this wool was gifted to me, I just knew that this had to be the field day jacket. And I've had this wool for a few months now and I still hadn't cast it on, but I just feel like it was finally the right time. And so I cast this on just yesterday. Let me show you the wool first because it is possibly just the most beautiful yarn I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so subtle and neutral, but it has little soft hints of color in there. And that is perfect for me because if you've been here for a while, you might remember that I have a tough time knitting in all neutrals, although I love the look of it and I would love to have some neutral pieces in my wardrobe, I can't really knit on it without getting extremely bored. So this is kind of a nice way for me to knit on it with having little surprises of color here and there and it really keeps my attention. So this is a top down drop shoulder cardigan construction. So I'm currently just working the back panel. As I said, I only casted this on last night, so there's not a whole lot to show, but it is a thicker like worsted slash Aran weight yarn. So it's knitting up quite quickly and I am using five millimeter needles. And this is the back panel and it is rolling in on itself. So it's a little tricky to show here, but look at these colors. 
How amazing is this cardigan going to be? I can't get over it. Like the top here, we had little bits of lavender and then it it goes into this beautiful like earthy orangey color and then a really soft green here and then just some more different like hints of blue in there too some darker browns I could not be more happy with how this is turning out and I, I can't wait to have this as a finished piece I am so excited about it and I'm so happy that I finally cast this on last night. So I really would love to have this before the cold weather really kicks in. So my goal is to have this done by December 1st, but I'm not sure how realistic that is because I do have some more gift knitting that I need to get done. I have about, well, I have two like toddler size sweaters to knit and then two hats to knit so I want those definitely have to be done before December 1st so those are priority and in between all that if I'm somehow able to find the time to knit a full adult size cardigan for myself great if not that's okay then I guess the next goal would be to finish it by January 1st because that is when the really cold weather starts where I live so that would be nice. And this is 100% wool, if I didn't say already. Yeah, just 100% wool. It's worsted weight, so it's super warm, and I just cannot wait to have this. So I am going to make a few modif modifications for this. This is kind of a longer jacket slash cardigan, and I like mine to be a little bit more cropped. I just find that it, that looks better on my body type. So I will be cropping this slightly and because of that the so I guess I should back up a little bit the neck band or not the neck band the button band is actually worked at the same time as the body so that's what really appealed to me for this pattern because I really don't enjoy picking up stitches for an especially a button band where it's <laughs> like such a long piece of fabric that you have to pick up stitches for. So if there are any cardigan patterns where it says that the button band is worked simultaneously as the body, that's already going to go like high up on my queue. So this works at the, as the same time as the body, which is a huge plus for me. The only downside to doing that is that the button holes are worked at the same time too. And so if you need them spread out evenly and you're, you can't, you know, you can't finish the body first and then see where you want to place out the button holes if you changed the length or, you know, of the body, then it makes it a little bit more tricky. Hopefully this is making sense <laughs> to do with how I'm saying it. So because I don't really know how long I want to make this yet, I just want to try it on as I go. I'm going to be doing afterthought buttonholes if I use buttons because the other alternative to that is that I could use like snap buttons and then I don't require any buttonholes at all. And then I can just finish up the cardigan, cardigan completely and then figure out where to place the buttons and the snaps. And then there's no problem there whatsoever. I can evenly like space them out. Or yeah, I can do the afterthought buttonholes, which shouldn't be a big deal at all. I have done an afterthought buttonhole. It wasn't for a buttonhole, but it was the exact same technique for when I did my my wrap top that I did over the summer. If you remember that, it had a little hole in the side for the little tie piece that went through it. And I just did like an after, I looked up a video for how to do an afterthought button hole. And that's exactly how I did it. It was super easy, so I thought I could always just do an afterthought buttonhole if I do want to put buttons on here. So anyways, yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Other than that, I'll be following the pattern completely, and I just am very excited to see how all of these colors play together and how they show up on the rest of the cardigan. I only have maybe an inch or two left of the back panel, and then I believe I'm possibly picking up stitches for the front pieces or maybe after that maybe I'm doing some more shaping for the armhole I'm not sure I haven't read far enough yet I'm not one to read through the pattern before I start I kind of just dive in oops, dive in and go for it 
So yeah, that's all of my whips and well, current whips at the moment. Those are my active whips. I do have two other whips that I have shown on here before, but they just haven't had much or any progress since I've shown them last. So I am contemplating whether or not I should frog them because I'm not feeling called to work on them whatsoever and they're like at the beginning stages of a project so I don't even have a whole lot of progress on them and it's just maybe been a few hours for each of them and I just yeah if they're not making me too happy right now so I might be frogging those and it is nice to just keep the number of whips to a low number right now when I'm trying to progress with my gift knitting before December starts. So normally I'm fine with knitting gifts throughout December as well, but this year I really don't want to do that because I do have last year's advent calendar still all available to me because I started last year's advent calendar and I started knitting a blanket with it, but I just didn't really like the way that the yarn was looking in this particular pattern. So I had ripped that out and everything's back in its little like wound up ball form and it's ready to go for this year. And I definitely want to do lots of advent knitting this year and I have a shawl picked out for it. And because I've already opened up all of the colors, nothing's a surprise to me, but I'm going to rearrange them into the order that I think will look, that I will like the most and maybe eliminate one or two colors, colorways that are just a bit too dark and stripey for me. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And this is the advent from, is it Little Big Yarn Co? And it was like a day at the museum in Japan. So it's all based off of like beautiful Japanese art. So all of the colors are amazing and with the colors comes a little QR code so you could look up what the yarn color was based off of, what painting it was based off of, and it was really cool to see because they were just like spot on with the colors. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to doing that come December 1st, and I really want to be like on top of it with my advent knitting this year and hopefully have a completed piece by Christmas. I think that'd be really fun. and. I don't want it to go to waste because it's the most beautiful yarn and I just want to get excited about that and have nothing else on my plate knitting wise uh, as far as gift knitting goes I guess during December so the goal and the focus for the next month and a half really is gift knitting. Like I mentioned before I have to knit for my niece and nephew so I really want to make them some warm winter sweaters this year. I actually have a bunch of this yarn in my stash that I was going to use this for a sweater for myself but I never got around to it and then I just didn't really love the color for me anymore. So it's a Stell Worsted and it's the color is Q612962 and it's what's good about this it's 50% acrylic 40% wool and 10% nylon so I think you could machine wash this wash these which would be great for my sister and her kids so I'm thinking of knitting them like matching sweaters maybe not the same pattern but at least the same color in this and this would be great to give around Christmas time it's a beautiful brick red and yeah so this is worsted weight yarn so it should knit up fairly quickly I'm just still undecided on which pattern I want to knit for them I am leaning towards doing some petite knit patterns because she has amazing children sweaters and they just you know they're tried and true and I know they would work out so I'm leaning towards that and I did actually just finish a uh, toque for my father-in-law I'll show that the next episode because it's I didn't think about this but I blocked it yesterday and it's still wet and it's just too flimsy to show so I'll show that on the next episode but that's nice I have another gift knit done and then after that I just have to knit a toque for my brother-in-law and then another toque I want to knit for my dad and then after that I'm like all set so maybe I could even get a sweater like for each of the kids a sweater for like knit a sweater in two weeks maybe that's a good goal for me to have 
because they're kids sweaters it'd be sizes one to two and three to four tiny worsted weight gauge I think that's doable and then within a month I could have theirs done and then I would just have to do two toques which is not a big deal at all the toque that I just finished took me three days so that's not bad at all so it's very doable and I'm excited about it. I've got a good momentum going. I just have to keep that momentum going and keep that motivation level high. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have on the go when for making wise. I do have some sewing that I'm working on, but I only really like to show sewing once it's a finished piece and I have some really cool pieces that I'm working on and I'd love to show them to you all once they're done. So that will be a, another time. But yeah, I think that's all I have to share with you all today. I'd also love to know if any of you are doing much gift knitting this year, or maybe you've scaled back. Um, yeah, it's always interesting to hear what people have to say about gift knitting and if they're doing it or maybe taking a break this year or maybe what patterns you're knitting because a quick gift knit is always, always, um, a good idea and it's easier to not lose momentum with the quicker ones I think but yeah I'll just end it here or else I'll keep rambling on <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today hopefully uh, I can have another video soon I'm trying to get back into a rhythm here and have somewhat of a schedule but that is really hard for me <laughs> but I'm working towards it and at the very least it'd be great to have one every two weeks and then maybe work into once a week but we'll see and yeah if you liked it if you could consider liking the video subscribing or leaving a comment that means the world to me and it really helps out to my videos and my channel so thank you so much and I'll see you all soon happy making bye